I know of our gotchas. All right. Hey, everybody. It is August. Can you believe this stuff? It is time for back to school, all kinds of fun things. But always, as we start off, you've got to meet somebody new. So look around. I see a couple new faces in the room. You got to say hi to two people you don't know. If you're online, you got to send a direct message to two people you don't know. You got one minute. Just <laughs> talk about our MVVB or P, our mission, our vision, our values, our belief, our perspectives. This week, we've got our beliefs up. Mm. What was, was your favorite? Well, I, see, I was looking at this yesterday trying to decide, and I keep going back to teamwork because mm. when we all work together, we all achieve more. In fact, it's an acronym, Together Everyone Achieves Ooh. More. Mm. There we go. What's your favorite? Um, so I really love the communication. So it's always seek first to understand and that happens in anything personal or professional. The one thing I wish they would change though, instead of customers changing it to clients. I know. I think clients just has a higher. Well, customers, if you're coming in and buying a product from someone, mm -hmm. client is you're serving them and you're helping them through a whole yeah. uh, transition of something. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll change that. We'll put our request in. That's right. <laughs> Uh oh, I did oh. that wrong. Dang it. Oh, oh. I didn't do the, the zoom right. Okay, so every week we do a, we, we change the slides up. Did you notice the new look? It's sort of a, a newer, the other one's getting kind of old and bubbly, and KWRI changed it. So we're thankful for that, but I missed this. So Maria and uh, Amy were the cultural yeah. leaders last week. Do you want to come up here right in the middle? And, and it's going to pop up and show who it is immediately. Yeah. So I screwed up on this slide. I don't think he's on Zoom, so I think he's on my Okay. Oh, well, we got to get this one over ready, don't yeah. we? Oh, okay. Yeah. So our winner this week is. Evan Van Ostrin. So Evan's kindness, generosity, and thoughtfulness have left an incredible, indelible, Amy's big with words, <laughs> indelible mark on us. He exemplifies the true spirit of being willing to serve, always going above and beyond to lend a helping hand and uplift his colleagues. Evan's constant encouragement and heartfelt compliments create a positive and inspiring inspiring atmosphere, making our work environment a place of friendship and growth. We are incredibly fortunate to have Evan and his exceptional qualities continue to inspire us daily. Okay, so Evan's phone number is... Since he's not here, we got to text him and you got to say congratulations on being culture winner. It's 417-771-9532. So in case he forgot today was team meeting, he's definitely going to find That's out. That's right. And I had to reset the slides. We didn't have our preview screens up. So mm -hmm. let's see what was coming up. Okay. So Yay. Yay next is broker moment. Jim Bolin, do you want to come give us a broker moment? No, I don't have to go up there. Okay. Uh, if you get a notice from the board, please respond to it and make the corrections. We had another one uh, yesterday that we're going to have to go to a hearing for because they didn't respond and correct the issue, which is fairly simple. It was a branding issue and it would have been easy to do. He just didn't do it. So it means either Don or I get to go sit and have people treat us like we don't know what we're doing as brokers. Now your job is to follow the rules. Our job is to try to assist you. But if you don't follow the rules, it doesn't do us any good. So please, if somebody sends you a message from the board, make sure you respond and correct that issue quickly. 
You know, the thing I found whenever, when we were processing checks for MCA role, it was you put missing checks in the subject line and it, it automatically increased. <laughs> so maybe that's what the board should do. No, say, do oh, potential new listing coming for you. Yeah. Listing lead and maybe they owe you money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Refund from the board. Oh, that's funny. So. Yeah, and if you'll answer those or ask us about it, we can help you through it. We don't want you to have to go to those things. So well, this is pretty do. simple. It is name and phone <clears throat> number in the marketing remarks. So all they had to do was delete it. it That's be. all they had to do is delete it. Okay. And another one we had was somebody had taken a picture of a driveway and it had a uh, neighbor's driveway on it. And the, uh, you know, they said, you can't do that, you know, because you're, it's misrepresentation, whatever. And we actually had a letter from a lawyer on that one. I'm like, what the hell? Turn your body around and shoot a picture this way. You know, yeah. it's that simple, right? Yeah. But well, we do have people watching for us to do things wrong, and they just hit the button. They're just violate, hit the violate button all day long. Yeah. Wait, that sounds weird. Okay. Um, also, we've had tag this in with broker moment. Um, Nicole uh, got well. Jim actually forwarded us all an email. There's a bunch of weird stuff going on. If trust your gut instinct. If somebody says, "Hey, come meet me in this vacant house tomorrow at whatever," don't. Um, you know, there were some. We had some things from around the state. You know, so we get to a vacant house and suddenly there's four cars there, people getting ready to take over the house. I mean, trust your gut instinct, let people know where you're going. Next month is realtor safety month. We're ready to go over a lot of stuff, but just use your common sense and, and ask us if, if something feels wrong, it probably is. And if you need someone to go with you on a showing, make sure you put it in the internal page. We've had that happen a couple of times. We've had numerous agents respond saying they'd go with you. So if you ever feel unsafe in a situation, always err on the side of caution, please. And have more the merrier going into absolutely the yep yeah you show up with a carload of people they change <laughs> their way of doing it real quick okay do not call people you're not supposed to and they start adding this slide too if you need info on how to find the different things and what's right what isn't here's a qr code so screenshot that real quick Keller Williams, among multiple other brokerages, just settled a $40 million lawsuit. Keller Williams portion was $40 million, and that doesn't include the other brokerages that just got involved in this TCPA lawsuit. So at a brokerage level, we are now working through of creating documents that every agent will have to sign saying they will abide by it to mm -hmm. also help reduce our liability because we're also communicating this every week during team meetings. So if you have any questions, please ask. Please err on the side of caution. We'd yeah. be happy to help you. Um, Gary was very nice this time and he absorbed the $40 million. However, he said moving forward, if this were to happen again, he's going to start passing it on to all the market centers to cover for that portion of it. So um, we're doing our due diligence. The, but we don't have $40 million. So. Nope, nope, we do not, unfortunately. So um, we're doing a little CYA and we just ask that you do the same thing too. And Nicole has put uh, all these resources are in the drive. So she's put the link out for those of you in the internet world out there. Um, also, we have a bunch of vendors and affiliates that are with us. Um, let's start. You pick where in here. I'm going to look for online. Okay. Um, I know we have Jeff from Pinnacle Mortgage online. Jeff, do you want to say, or sorry, Bears Pinnacle, um, do you want to say anything really quick? Good morning. Uh, glad to be here. And uh, yeah, we're one of your new vendor partners. And uh, something I'll leave with you today is we have a 1% down conventional loan, no monthly PMI. And uh, we have, actually have a 2% grant towards their down payment. It's forgivable money. So would love to connect with you after the meeting throughout the week and give you more details. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, Adam. Adam McGrath with Paragon Insurance Agency. Uh, we love helping home buyers figure out the home insurance world, and we appreciate you guys. You've been busy the last day, I assume. Yesterday was insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, George Brockman with the Chose Supple Warranty, where we give your clients the power of juice. Okay, and did you have some sign writers I saw? Those are mine. Leave them alone. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. I retract that. Yeah. <laughs> Christina. Hi, Christina Ferrante. I'm with 417 Home Loans, and we are really proud to announce that now everybody's up in their feels about the fact that USDA, October 1st, will not be Republic, Nixar, Ozark, but that's okay. We have three different zero down payment FHA loans. And if anybody wants to talk to me about those, I'd love to talk to you. Go Keller. <laughs> Christy and Cindy, Great American. Well, they divide and conquer. Cindy Christy Norris, Great American title. Uh, just remember, as you go further out, we have a C-squared. Um, yeah, that's better than some of the other things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
listen, guys, as you go further out and you go further and further out for business, remember we've got 16 locations throughout the Ozarks are right here with you. And we're here to support you in every way that we can when you have successful closings and repeat business and, and keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alex. Hello, Alex Costas with Community Mortgage Brokers. Um, yeah, the USDA, the MAPS, uh, they're not eligible after 10-1, but um, as a lot of other mortgage companies, uh, there's a 0% down payment, 1%. That's going to have to counteract those USDA loans for people that were looking in Nick's over public Ozark. So reach out to me if you have, if you have any questions. Awesome. Thank you. Else, I think that's everybody. I thought it was somebody else online. I think that I think Jeff was our only online participant. Okay. Um, okay. So these our affiliates come in here to meet with you and help you do business better. Make sure you're visiting with them after the meeting. Mm -hmm. Find out what they have, uh, resources to help you serve your clients better. And a lot of the events we're doing is because of their partnership and what to become a bar vendor partner. So anything that we are doing as a market center event, it's most likely put on from one of our vendor partners. So make sure you tell them thank you. All right, realtor stuff. Uh, like as we always say, you get these slides every Sunday night. We're just going to hit the highlights. The September annual meeting is coming up. Uh, September 28th is at uh, Farmer's Market or Farmer's Park. Farmer's Park. Yeah, it's probably on here somewhere. Our pet corn cornhole tournament, which is always big. It's a fun evening. There's an auction. Usually there's a bunch of Chiefs memorabilia there, um, but it's the covered area, so it's nice and fun, and that'll be, uh, wow, September's almost here. Um, oh, there's the cornhole tournament. It sells out fast. So if you've got a team, um, you got to get them signed up quickly for that. There's a mixer for YPN tonight at Old Wire Road. Is it Wire? I can never say Old it right. Wire Road. Wire Road yeah. Brewing Company. I've got to be in the dunk tank. Yay. I think I saw that Zach Riggs is also. So there's quite a few of us in there. Um, George was saying it's some kind of vote thing. Yeah. So the, the top five vote getters get 10 minutes in the dunk tank, but you have to donate through the Venmo. Um, At GSBOR. to GSBOR. So I'm voting today $20 for Mike and $20 for Zach to make sure that they're in there. So I suggest yeah. So okay. if you get selected, do you get to choose what order in the water you'd like to go? Because I, I would know. always recommend number one. Yes, because no that, one wants to be the last person no, in the water. Uh, <laughs> I, did, <laughs> I did go and buy a special outfit last night. Oh, so I could only so, imagine. Oh, oh, no, 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 sure. Yeah. <laughs> So that'll be fun, and it's a fun place to be. So, oh, 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 what was it? I'm glad I missed it. I said no birthday suit. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was <What's> not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's four to six tonight. So make sure you're there. We love Mike. We want him to still have a job here. That's no right. <laughs> yes, that would be very awkward on social media. Um, <laughs> I didn't know if Elise was on this. I put this on here. Um, Christina, do you want to say anything about this? Yeah, this is a really cool event that um, Elise has um, decided to take the, the program that she has mm -hmm. for um, the Rainbow Network for KW. I didn't want to be incorrect. Yep. And so she's doing a condensed version of this for the board just to really bring light to the fact that, uh, you know, our, our community that is of the queer community is very underserved in the housing market. So um, I'm sponsoring this. Lindsay Fearing is sponsoring this. We're going to have champagne and cupcakes. And we would love to see any of you so we can learn how to be more inclusive. What a great little champagne and cupcakes. That's right. Okay, did you know after the implementation of the new MLS fine policy, the percentage decrease in total fines went down 20 or 78 percent? So there are a lot less fines if you answer your emails. <laughs> okay, here's another thing I want you all to know. How many of you work with some kind of community event or some kind of uh, even a nonprofit? Sorry about that. Several of you do. There's $143,000 of fine money sitting there that can now be used through the Community Reinvestment Act. There is a Community Reinvestment Fund. <laughs> Sounds like it's a government thing. But there's a form you can fill out, and um, there's a process for it, but that money is there to go into the community. So check with the board. I'll see if I can find that form for you also. But that money needs to get out and be used. And obviously, there's a lot less this year, but it's been sitting there for years. So if you're involved in some kind of thing in town and you think there should be money towards it, um, look for that application form. Okay, um, this week, here's our calendar actually for the month. And I love what Haley did with this. It is now color coded. So if it's a new agent thing, it's in blue. Oh yeah. Masterminds are red. Tech is green. So you can kind of see all the different stuff going on. Also mega agent campus coming up and bold is starting. Also down here, you see our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten new people that joined us this last month. Um, actually, let's say, say hi to Lucretia, Yannick, Kristen, Samantha, Justin, Melissa, Teresa, Brandon, Emily, and Sierra. 
Give them a round of applause. Thank you for coming all night. I think there's a couple in here. We are so thrilled you're part of the KW family. Um, and make sure that we're all reaching out and helping everybody get started on things because there's a lot to learn when you first get here. And Brian Fisher rescheduled his AI class to this Thursday at 1230. He did a little preview of it for our admin mastermind and it was awesome. So if you have oh questions gosh, on what yes. is AI, chat GPT, whatever you want to call it, um, please join us on Thursday because I believe a lot of our admins left like, oh my goodness, there's so many ideas we can now implement into our real estate business. So definitely come for that 1230 on Thursday. And notice once bulb starts on August 22nd, we've moved team meeting to Wednesdays at 11. So for yep. about six or seven weeks, that's going to be changed because uh, we have 150 some people going to bowling. So they would not be available for team meetings. So just that's most of of all times, probably, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we're actually <laughs> number two right now in the launch. Uh, KW Rainbow Network Virtual is actually beating us, so we we have to we have to win. There's so a slide coming We need coming more people that. to sign up for both. They're exactly. beating us right now. Um, okay, so you were talking about the town hall. Yeah, so for those of you that have been with KW for a while, you know what the international ALC meeting is that happens at Mega Camp. For those of you that don't know, at our local level, we have an associate leadership council, and that is comprised of this year's 10 of our top agents and leaders that we meet once a month to talk about market center stuff that's going on, leadership, what's happening in their business, and they're also there to be the voice of our agents. So anything at a market center level, we do not move forward with until we get the input from our ALC. So at the international ALC meeting at Mega Camp, we actually have four big votes that are happening this year. Mm -hmm. This is the first time it's ever happened in my almost six years of being at KW that they're having these kind of votes. And two of them are around profit share. And these are really important as agents. We know that we have the opportunity for a profit share to have passive income. And there's a couple of changes that are coming down the line um, or gonna be voted on, I should say. So Thursday, we are having a town hall meeting. I would love for everybody to be here to learn about those uh, votes, because um, what's going to happen is in our region, we have three people that are going to be able to vote for the voice of our, vote, uh, for the voice of our agents throughout our region. Um, Who are they? <laughs> well, there's two agents, um, one in Iowa and one in St. Louis, and then there's one leadership delegate, and I was chosen to be that leadership delegate. So therefore, following ALC protocol, I want to hear from our agents on their feedback based on these proposals. What we're going to do is we're going to have the town hall on Thursday, our next ALC meeting next week, our ALC is actually going to do a mock vote on how they would vote for these four proposals. Then based on that, we'll go to mega camp, camp next week and I will be voting. So if you have any questions about this, um, please let me know, but I would love to have everybody here on Thursday so you can understand what these votes are. Um, three of them are at a mark, two of them are profit share, one is more of a financial KWRI PNG, and the fourth one is for market centers too. So be a great conversation. I know our ALC members and investors will also be here. So if not, it'll be a great time if you could just come and network with them as well. And we're the only real estate company where the agents make the choices on how it's run. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Most places it's the, the chairman or the stock owners. We are making these decisions at grassroots level, and that goes up and gets voted on. So make your voice heard. Okay, back to what uh, Mark was talking about. Bold is going to be incredible this year. Uh, we have Coach Molly, who is the, she's only doing one bold all year. It's ours. This is the new concept of it for the coming market. Um, we're the guinea pigs, basically. Yeah, it's the new version of bold. They just rewrote it as well. Yeah. So as of right now, we have 63 people signed up for full bold. And we have 75 for first steps. 63 from our office. Uh, Joplin, Branson, and Lake will also be attending, and they have some registries. We have to get 150. So while you're also attending Bull, this is a great networking opportunity to meet agents in Joplin, Branson, and Lake of the Ozarks as well, because there are a lot of agents who still do referral deals from people they've met in Bold in that area. So we need to hit 150, and we're well on our way there. Yeah. But our goal is 75 from our market center. Um, and Molly said, if we have anybody that is signed up for full bold by next Friday, also gets a private, it's not a private coaching session, but it's a group session. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, Calls, preparing to welcome you. No, my my, my hand oh, no. so bad. Preparing to welcome my best self. It is a thing that you get if you're signed up by August 11th. Mm -hmm. um, this is, it's going to be, we've left in tears every time we've had a meeting with Molly. This is the fourth one we've had. She's going to be very much on the productive side. She runs a productive team. It's also going to be the mindset things, and it's going to be a bigger life. 
It's going to be all of it. And we all know every realtor runs on realtor standard time. So whenever you're arriving, you're normally five to 10 minutes afterwards, just like events. We normally wait till realtor standard time till we yeah. get registrations. <laughs> this is a push to get everybody before bold so you can be a part of this group with Molly for this special coaching. Yeah, yeah. realtor well, standard time. What's weird is we are supposed to have 150, but the max is also 150. So it will probably sell out. Yeah. Um, and it's open to other agents from other companies. We have several from different brokerages. Mm -hmm. What I've told them, we've got people from here, Joplin, Lake of the Ozarks. A lot of us are not going to know a bunch of people. Everyone will fit in because it's not like, you know, it's you, one person and the rest of a different brokerage. So if you've got people that are interested, we have a, a scholarship thing we can do for non-KW agents, mm -hmm. but they're going fast. And we do have payment plans and scholarship opportunities yeah. locally for us. If, you're, if this is the first time you've done bold, you can get it for half price. In fact, look at this. We actually have the forms right here. Bold payment plan, and then the bold sign-up sheet. But our goal is to have seven more people this week. It will change your life. The DTD2 part of it changed the way I do business. It gave me a more balance to things. And that was just one little segment of it. So there's going to be a lot. Um, oh, there's the scholarship info. And that's for bold KW International. Right. Yep. Okay. Here's the QR codes. We would like as many people as possible to sign up for full bold. Step one is like, um, I don't know if I'm going to do this. I, I want to test it out for the first day. The full bowl is right here. So anybody online, if you can screenshot that, sign up. Um, or if you need help, Haley and Nicole have a whole system up there. We can get it going. But um, another seven people this week, we want to change their lives to get them signed up for this. Okay, what's new at the Market Center? We're going to skip this one because I didn't get to talk with Pauline about the new book. Um, save the date. So we're in the middle of the summer of success. Next week is a guest named Brad Papa. His, his, his team in Kansas City is called Papa's in the House. I think that's fun. But he's got a great segment on mindset, especially coming into the fourth quarter. So that's next week. And then we have Bold, or Meg Kim, then Bold. And today we have Meg Dady. Did I say it right? She's actually been online most of the meeting, so yeah. she's hearing how cool yeah, we so are. we got to get through these last yeah, things. Yeah, so, so we're going to get, get through this so we get to her. Meg and Kim, let's hear from Uncle Gary. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm so excited about Meg Agent Camp this year. You know, every year, Jay, Jason, and myself, we sit down months in advance, and we ask the question, how can we help? What can we do? What value can we bring to you that would make a difference right now in your lives? So, as you know, it's the three L's. It's leads, listings, and leverage, and then we add in wealth building, and we just go for it. To me, that's what Meg Agent Camp is, thinking big, aiming high, and tackling the issues in a manner that would really help you right now tickets are limited this year i apologize for that so if you're coming grab that ticket and come on i can't wait to see you it's gonna be great they talked yesterday on the growth call with us they have 80 different people are gonna be on stage sharing stuff from how they're doing things around the country so it's not just springfield mindset it's getting everything else before it gets to springfield Top five reasons to attend, 100% agent-focused con focused content. Nothing about leadership. This is all about agents. Two, strategies for thriving in any market. Third, network networking with top producing agents. We have several agents who make one referral contact each year, and it pays for their entire bowl or their entire mega camp, and their bowl. Tap into a world of potential referrals. Gary and other industry luminaries, and we usually have some more people up there, too. I haven't heard yet on that. And Tim Tebow is going to be there. So we have tickets for that also. And you wanted to share some of what they talked yeah. about yesterday. So yesterday, Jason Abrams was on the KW Leadership Growth Call, and he went to the whiteboard. And whenever Jason goes to a whiteboard, his genius just shares with everybody. <laughs> uh, so this is what he drew for us. And I kind of paraphrase in there to help kind of explain what's going on. So when we looked at this circle, he said that real estate agents have two sides of the coin. They have a job and they have a business. And when you talk to agents and you ask them if they can identify their top three lead sources, how many of you could say, I know what those are? Okay. And so when I talk with agents, it's about 50-50. And truth be told, I think it may take a couple of years for you to identify what your true lead sources are because you can identify what you're passionate about and what you like doing and maybe what you don't like doing. And so as you go through and you say, these are my three lead sources, the other side of the coin is your business side. And it's do you do the... This is where it helps leads come in and then it takes less effort on a daily basis. So as we're talking about our job and our lead sources, here um, at Mega Camp, they're gonna be sharing 60 different lead sources with agents. There are some agents that make a million dollars a year off Instagram from prospecting. There are some agents that make a million dollars from door knocking 152 days of the year. Um, then it's MOFR, which is make offer for immediate response. 
events and farming. And so I'm so excited Meg will be here today to talk about events because this will play right into it. And so when he said, when we're talking about our three lead sources, every day an agent should wake up knowing what they need to do for the day. And that means what lead sources and what lead gen levers am I going to pull? Once we have these leads, the next step should be putting them into your command. Once you have them in command, you have them in one spot there that you can always go and look and reference. Then you get them set up on a monthly neighborhood nurture. The monthly neighborhood nurture for your clients will tell them what's happening in their neighborhood, what home values are looking like. The second one is a quarterly call plan. These are people that they want to hear from you because they like, know, and trust you from different relations to community events, or maybe they've been past clients. And the third one is a safe search that you can set them up on, and it's looking to buy. So as you funnel through this, you identify your lead sources, put them in command, set them up on these through command, uh, your monthly neighborhood nurture, quarterly call, and safe search, and then that should return the money that you make. And so if we converted it down to three different aspects, it would be meet. How many people can I meet? How many people can I talk to every single day from these lead sources I've identified that I like? The second part is you convert them into fans. By meeting them, you put them in your command, you're dripping on them, and you're converting them into your raving fans. If you haven't read that book, I would highly recommend. Then the last aspect, last aspect of it is once you've converted them into raving fans and they want to choose you to be their agent, then you give them great service and make them clients for life. Again, clients, not customers. And so this is how he broke it out for this. So if you don't know what your three lead sources are, start here. If you know who your three lead sources are, how can you touch them in a systematic way, right? The four laws of your database. And then once you've started touching them in a systematic way, how can you make sure that they become clients for life and then that you're giving them great service over and over so then you get referrals from that every single time? So all of that being said, if you're going to Megacamp, go with the intention of what are the lead sources I want to learn more about or what clarity do I need to learn from these lead sources? And if you have questions on what lead sources could be or what you like, come and talk to one of us in leadership and we'd be happy to talk with you more about that. So it ain't about going and renting a billboard or stuff like that. It is about meeting people. It's a relationship business. And all these things we put together are to help you learn how to do that at a higher level. Come back. Okay. And it's time for Nicole up in the internet world. Hi, Nicole. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Good. Good Okay, so I have something that's coming soon. So it is coming either the end of this week or sometime next week, um, probably the beginning of next week. If you are utilizing your KW command app at a high level, then this is definitely going to be for you. You can now manage your layout. So you can customize your dashboard. So then that way it's a lot easier for you to view it. Another thing that's really cool is you can now edit and you can create access and edit opportunity notes. So whenever you're in your opportunity, you want to make those notes because you just were talking to your client, you can do that right through your command app now. Um, and then now there's a last updated identifier to your profit share widget. So all of that is in your KW command app. Um, I'm going to have something really, really cool next week. Like I said, command paid ads are coming. So that gets launched next Tuesday. So I'll have more for you guys on that um, for next team meeting. If you want to go to the next slide. Yep. So I know you guys have been getting a lot of information about marketing compliance, but I know that even our brokers, um, everyone on the leadership team, we're here to assist you with those emails you may be getting from the board. Um, again, these are our checklists. I did put the link for the Google Drive in the um, in the chat over here. Um, all of that, all the information, all the resources are in there um, that you need to make sure that you are compliant for your marketing. And then the next page is just the same thing from last week, your do's and your don'ts. We have those compliance tags in the top left and top right hand corners. So make sure that you're adding those to your um, social media, your signage, anything like that. I'm really proud of a lot of you because you have been using these. So thank you so, so much. Makes it easier on you and it makes it easier on us. So stay compliant. Let's uh, just get that marketing where it needs to be. Very cool. Thank you so much. She can help you with any of your internet and your, your tech stuff. Okay, market numbers. We're only going to hit one main thing here. Look at this compared to last year. And it pops up. Last year, this time of year, well, right now, Soma has 444 active listings yesterday. Last year, 479. The gap is narrowing. Last year, about this time, is when the interest rates went crazy. And we're about to where it's been a whole year of this normal amount of houses for sale. 279 listings of GSBOR, 295 last year, 20 difference. It's not hundreds anymore. So you'll see we're getting much, in other words, the market we're in now, we've been in for a year. 
So if you're still going, well, remember when I had whatever, uh -uh, that's past. Also, 1226, we went up in active listings available in GSBOR. So we're starting to see a balance come about, which is interesting right at the end of summer is hitting. So I'm going to hand over to Rachel. Okay. So today's speaker, thank you, Meg, for waiting for us as we got through our announcements. I am so excited to announce Meg Dady. She's out of KW1 Chicago. Meg was actually on stage at Family Reunion this year um, about micro events and what she does. Um, it's, I'll let you take over the slide. Okay, there. great. Um, we're so excited. She's an individual agent, and so she's sharing her whole guide on how she uses micro events and how she gets very specific of what a micro event is and her specific clientele. So, um, Meg, without further ado, let me bring you up on screen and let me pin you up there. Can you hear us? Yes. Thank okay. you so much for having me. I'm super excited to chat about my favorite topic. Yes. Um, and I didn't hear Jason <laughs> on the growth call yesterday, but when I was, I joined, I, became, I started in real estate in 2015 and joined Keller Williams in 2018 and went to my first family reunion about three weeks after joining Keller Williams. It was in Anaheim and I was on a flight back with my team leader at the time. And his question was, everyone on stage focuses on one thing for lead generation. What's your thing going to be? And I immediately said events. And I, that was mainly because I had practiced as an attorney for years prior to getting into real estate and just was used to going to a ton of networking events. So I, that was kind of what I knew. Um, and I was also had worked for an event company as an attorney. So it was somewhat in my blood, but I didn't know until family reunion and seeing other people do it at a high level, like how to really translate that to real estate. Um, so that was in 2018. And around that same time, um, I was, I guess later in 2018, worked an open house, someone came in and she was, you know, dressed almost the same as me, similar age, was in a neighborhood that I knew super well. We hit it off right away. Um, her name was Kari and we now are really close friends, but she, she was just like one of those clients that was awesome to work with. I knew we would be friends afterwards. She was moving here from San Francisco for a job relocation. And um, yeah, it was kind of like fall of 2018. So around the same time when we're starting to think about business planning for the following year and wrapping up, you know, now I'm trying to figure out how do I close out the year, this year strong. So, I would at the time I was thinking, okay, so for 2019, I my goal is 30 units. What if I could just find 30 women exactly like Kari? This business would be so much more fun. I would enjoy working, you know, find clients that I really enjoyed working with. So I decided I was going to focus on that. Like instead of trying to help everyone in Chicago, all I wanted to do was try and find 30 women who were you know, young professionals, um, her price point was around 500,000. So a great price point, but also just had a lot in common with me, like, you know, enjoyed trying out new restaurants and new workouts and, you know, kind of just enjoying everything that Chicago had to offer. Um, and so I basically wrote my avatar of an idea of my ideal client. So I'll also really quick say, I'm not sure this QR code is working, but I'm not, it's supposed to email you back a download. I'm not sure it's doing that. I tried it. If it's not, I have a link to download it. So just let me know if that's not working um, and I'll send everyone the download. And then I don't know if I can move the- um, Meg, you have co-host, so you can advance the slides as you need. Got it, okay. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Um, since the slides aren't on my computer, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, okay, here, let me go ahead and advance it for you. Perfect. Thank you. You should be able to just, yeah, you'll, you'll get it. <laughs> so what I was doing at the time was basically just narrowing my focus to a niche, niche client, um, single professional women, 28 to 34, usually type A personalities, which don't make for the easiest client to work with. Um, but they were just, it, it, it framed it in a way that I could figure out how to meet more of them by narrowing the focus to the smallest viable audience. Um, 
I really was able to figure out like, okay, like I said, I'm not trying to meet everyone in Chicago. Um, I can work open houses where this type of person is likely to be coming in. And I realized that was how I was going to connect the events to finding more clients was hosting events specifically targeted at these women who were already in my database and meeting more of their friends. So um, this concept of small, small viable audience from Seth Godin, he says two things happen when you delight your minimum viable audience. You discover it's a lot larger group than you expected and they tell the others. So this was how the events really started. Um, now I have two ideal clients and it's these same professional women, you know, in their late twenties, early thirties. And then a few years later when they're now usually married or a couple and maybe have a kid or a dog looking for slightly more space. So first time buyers and upsizers are really like the easy way to, to put it, but I've narrowed it down even further. So this is a little screenshot of my website. Um, my website is, and pretty much everything I do are directed at these two types of clients. Um, and it's really based on more interest and kind of like their careers, not anything that's gonna violate fair housing. I help everyone, um, especially your referrals. That's kind of the third ideal client, but um, everything that I'm kind of, all of my marketing is directed at attracting these specific ideal clients to me so that then I can, you know, continue to meet more of them, build my database of people that I enjoy working with. So right now, what I want you to do is think about your favorite client from this past year. Um, Kathy Heidi is someone who is a great example of this. She got started in the business in, I think, like 2015 as well. And she, those are her two dogs. Um, she just grew her database by going to dog park. She loves dogs. She's now super involved in her local neighborhood, like pet organizations. So it, yours are not professional women, I'm assuming, but who was your favorite client? Maybe they are someone that you met from church or school or um, an alumni group. And I would get really specific on what their price point was, what you enjoyed working with them, like why you enjoyed working with them, what was hard for them for upsizers, you know, what's their struggle, their limited inventory, um, you know, they have a 3% interest rate. So they, my upsizers are not really moving right now because they're, they're making it last a little bit longer. So, um, and then next is, identifying that favorite client, but then what do they have in common? And then thinking now, like who is motivated to move now? So I mentioned that those are my two, you know, prime ideal clients, our first time home buyers and upsizers. Well, the upsizers aren't really doing much. So I'm focusing a lot more of my events this year on those first time buyers because they're the ones who aren't already in a 3% interest rate. Um, they're in an expensive lease and maybe that lease is up like I'm working with someone right now her lease is up at the end of September so she has the urgency that I need to meet my numbers by the end of the year um, so does anyone have an ideal client they want to share um, or any other ideas that I haven't mentioned the common ones are first-time home buyers upsizers downsizers does anyone have any specific clients that they market towards? If not, we can keep moving forward, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas to um, start thinking about because this really plays into how to do events and just marketing at a more specific audience. Um, so once you have that kind of ideal client, and, and for me, it's obviously changed throughout the years and grown and I've added more, but I really recommend thinking about one specific person first or one kind of more target group and then kind of figuring out how you connect can connect more with them. I spoke with someone recently and he has two little kids, like three in one, um, you know, has been living in Austin for a long time and he wanted to kind of get started in with these micro events as well. And I was just asking him a lot about like, well, what are, what are your hobbies? Like, where do you meet people? 
your kids aren't quite in school yet, so not other parents, but, and he said, oh, I've been part of a running group for five years. And so he's really connected with those people, but they may not see him. They probably know he's in real estate, I'm sure, but kind of the next, so he's now strategically connected with those people who are professionals and, you know, live in the same, in right in the heart of the city. So getting them into his database is the next step. So you figured out who that ideal client is. You've got, then gone to places and gotten involved by volunteering or joining a running group or joining mm -hmm. your local chamber of commerce to meet more of them. And then, so that's step two. Step three is hosting your own events. Um, so I believe there's six event types. And today I'm going to focus on just the first two because there's all kinds of classes and you know materials on all the other four. Um, so strategic socializing is really just connecting with people for free. So um, four to six people. And then micro events are a little bit larger than that. And this is where all the vendors that we're on today can be a great partner for you. Um, I really connect with a lot of vendors who also believe in kind of the event life. They get into it just as much as I do and, and they've been great partners for me. Um, but if maybe if your ideal, if your ideal client are first time home buyers, seminars could be a great event type that matches with them. Um, downsizers, seminars also. So tying into who that ideal client is, is really going to help you figure out which of these strategies for events um, can work. And I do a combination of pretty much all six of these, but I really focus most on the first two. Um, because they're really affordable and free in a lot of cases. Um, so strategic socializing is just as it sounds. It's figuring out who you want to connect with and who's already in your database that um, has similar interests as you. And we can go on to the next slide because it has a little, few more ideas. So um, this is in, for this strategy, think of yourself as the facilitator or the organizer. So um, it's meeting friends for pickleball because pickleball is huge right now. I still haven't tried it, but I, <laughs> I, I think it sounds so fun. And, and the Barbie movie is another great example. Everyone's posting online that they're going. Who could you text today and just say, hey, I'm thinking of going to the Barbie movie on Thursday night, like want to grab tickets and do you want to invite a couple other people? So this strategy is, I try to do this once a month just to get out of my comfort zone. I'm really an introvert. So um, I, I need like to put things on the calendar and, and really force myself to just get out of kind of like my three friends that I hang out with all the time. And I think it, it becomes like a fun way to just um, meet new people in a, a way that feels really organic. So um, for the Barbie movie example, I'm, I was talking with a, a, with a client about it last night and her sister was the one who referred me to her. So, so I haven't seen a sister who referred me in a long time. I'm gonna text like the two of them plus another friend that knows them. Um, and probably a few a handful of other people, just try and get four to six people together. And I'll, I'll, I'm gonna throw out a date that works for me and, and just say, suggest the movie as a social thing and let everyone buy their own tickets or just say, hey, I'm gonna buy the tickets. They're gonna be $17 a piece. And so it, it, it's, this isn't like, this is more of being the facilitator of like, a, rant, a friend group or a pickleball match or, you know, a book club, all these things are basically free or inexpensive and no one's going to expect you to pick up the tab. So it's just a way to keep, you know, meeting people. And the key is also asking them to bring a friend. So same thing with the next one. This is the micro events I do um, six, 10 per year. Well, this year I'm doing more like of these. I do them about every um, three weeks and I'm doing more this year because I'm trying to expand the events into a suburb where my sister and my parents live. Um, so I'm kind of doing double what I have done previously. 
These are typically about a thousand dollars per event. Sometimes I can do them for cheaper. I have a vendor help with the cost so that I'm paying almost nothing. Um, and they're typically for like around, if it's families, usually 20 to 25 families. If it's professional women, then usually about the same 20 to 30 people. Um, last month I did a yoga and ice cream social for families. It was a, on a Sunday morning. Um, the yoga instructor did it for free. It was outside. I paid $350 for like 50 people to get ice cream. So, and actually I think my lender is going to reimburse me for that. Um, so it, these are great because they can get a lot of people out and you can connect with them in a very short amount of time, but they're again, like really inexpensive. Um, and the key again comes down to knowing who you want to connect with. So I know my ideal clients so well that I know exactly what they're going to find fun. Um, wreath making is a hit every single year, like craft events for women in their thirties and forties is like so much fun. Everyone has a blast. And I literally have had clients say like, please keep this wreath making event on the calendar every year. Cause they know that I tend to repeat the, the events that I like. Um, one that I would highly recommend that everyone do, and you still have plenty of time to plan it would be a, uh, photo event for the holidays. Mine are typically <laughs> October or early November before the holiday rush begins. And um, these again are mostly, so like I start by inviting kind of my VIP A-list people, but I ask all of them to bring a friend. So my goal is that each event is about half people from my sphere and half their friends. So I'm building the list of people who are very similar to my ideal clients and it creates this like super warm referral lead so that people, they're not gonna buy like right after they come to an event, but if they come to a couple different events and they're now on my email list and getting the full 36 touch, then they're, you know, just a much bigger, closer, easier lead. Um, so I think, yes. So here are the, I keep all of the events super simple. So this is the basic format for basically, for pretty much all of my kind of 20 to 40 person events. Um, for a photographer, I would recommend finding someone who's kind of more up and coming in your area. Mine sends all of the files. He charges me an hourly fee. I think it's $200 an hour. He'll send all of the photos files in one gallery. So like the 25 families will see everyone else's photos, but they're each gonna get 10 to 15 like shots of themselves. So everyone's happy with like, you know, he, he keeps going until they get a good shot. Um, the other key to this is finding a free venue. I've done it many times in the parking lot of my office, which has this awesome white brick wall. I think outdoor photos turn out a lot better. So I'll always have it like a rain plan, but um, try to keep them outside with the natural sunlight. Sunday mornings are awesome because people aren't expecting alcohol. Um, you can just have like coffee and donuts for, again, my lender usually picks that up. I just tell him what I want and he shows up with it. I don't even usually know how much it costs. Um, I have everyone sign up via Eventbrite so that I, you can set the Eventbrite link to capture their home address and you know email and phone number. So as people, as I continue to grow the number of people who come to these events, I have full complete contact information to just add right into a command. And um, your tech person sounds great and probably knows better than I do, but I think that Eventbrite connects to command now. So I need to figure that out, but um, I think, yeah, I know they're doing so much more with command every day. Um, so there are typically like four to five touches around each of these micro events. Um, one resource that I use all the time is called the reach app. It's like a little white and green R icon. Um, and it can uses your phone number. You can upload. So I upload my list of VIPs and then I can send one, like create one message, text it to all of them, but it, it sends, I, 
individually send each text, but you can move through it really quickly. Your market, my market center uses this app too. So maybe yours does as well. Um, but so I can customize it if I've seen them like the day before and, but I can quickly text a group of 70 or 80 people sending out the, these links. So I've set up this, like I'm so not the person who's gonna be cold calling and, and I, TCPA does scare me, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I rely maybe a little too heavily on texting, um, but all of my lead gen and prospecting is based around the event. So I've put in so many events because I want a reason to reach out to my database that has something of value for them. Um, does anyone have any questions as we kind of keep continuing to go through this? What app did you use to text? It's called Reach. It's awesome. It's um, it. I maybe I pay. I think it's five ninety nine a month. So there is a small cost, but um, you can upload as many lists as you want and with a CSV. So I'm trying to get better at just keeping my database tagged. So I I have people tagged by what type of event they're going to get invited to. So you can see from here, like I do events for women in the city, events for women in the suburbs. And those are just based on like location, not because they're different events, it's just they're an hour away from each other. Um, and so my database is tagged by which event type of events they're gonna com come to. So I can upload a list of women in the city, kind of A-list people. And then when I want to invite them to an event, I can cruise through that list very quickly. Super helpful. Um, so I'm pretty much on track with all of these events this year and it looks really overwhelming, but um, they're all, I can't stress how, how I keep these events super simple. I had someone reach, or I reached out to a venue recently about doing an event and just the response was just very like, um, I, cold a little bit and they didn't seem excited to part, like I always say, would you like to partner on this? Hoping maybe they won't charge me. Um, like the one I did in June was a new Pilates studio in my neighborhood. I started going there. I happened to meet the owner one day and mention, I, I always say when I meet someone like that, like, oh, I do a lot of events for professional women around, like in our community. And I love partnering with um, other women business owners. And she was super excited about it. I emailed her right away and, you know, asked for when I do the, um, the women's events, they're usually a Tuesday or Wednesday evening. And so I threw out a couple of dates. She said one worked and it was super easy. This other one earlier this week just was, I could tell it was difficult right off the bat. It's like, I'm moving on to someone else. If, it, if I don't think it's going to be easy, it's like on to the next. Um, so I look for things that I think sound like really fun and <laughs> more of like an experience. So the, um, I, call, I guess I call them experiential events because something like a terrarium workshop or wreath making, those can be, if you saw it posted on Eventbrite, like a $75 thing, which I, probably wouldn't pay for it, to be honest. Um, and I don't know that I, if I like candle making, if I texted my friend saying like, hey, do you want to do a $75 workshop to make a candle? I know that would get anyone to join. But if I text a lender saying, hey, do you want to partner with me on this? It's going to be $500 each. Um, and I'm going to invite, get 20 people to come. Then that's, I can text 20 people that it's going to be a free event and they'll all show up. So, I mean, I guess it's ultimately way more expensive for me, but um, the payoff is the ROI on these events is huge. So I hosted last November, I'm looking at the mixology workshop. I had um, 20 people come to the mixology workshop last November. And I think 
at least three or four people from that workshop have bought wow. this year in the next six months. Mm -hmm. So let's call it three, so $45,000 in GCI for a $500 event. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm strategic about who I'm inviting. Like if I've been connected with someone, but they're saying they're not gonna buy for six months, well, they're gonna get an invite to every single event that I'm doing in those next six months. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yes, so I'm super excited to talk to, with you guys about this and I am always happy to brainstorm, you know, who your ideal client is because I think that is really the key foundation to all of this. It's the foundation of all of my marketing is, is knowing who I'm really trying to speak to and who I'm trying to attract to me. Um, so think about like, is it upsizers or downsizers? Who has to move right now? Um, and maybe you start just by, you know, getting involved at school or in your running group or just joining something that you are already interested in and have been thinking. There's so many things that, you know, I've been thinking about for a while that by trying to get more strategic about this, especially because the market's tough. These are all free and all these organizations want more people involved. Um, and then how can you, once you start to get involved, you know, maybe it is volunteering with other parents. How can you maybe set up a play date or do some strategic connecting, strategic socializing with them um, to start being the facilitator of, of the group? which gets you their contact info. And then you can, so it's sort of like you, you volunteer with them, you start organizing a play date, a movie night or wine club, you know, whatever it is that, that's more organic socializing. And then they start getting invites to your like slightly larger 20 person events that feel more like a real estate event, even though you're never gonna mention real estate. So um, if that download doesn't work, I can send the link to, to get it. I came up with 101 micro event ideas, um, yeah. almost all like really inexpensive. What questions can I answer really quick? Yeah, thank you, Meg, so much. And um, if this doesn't work, she can just send it to me and I can pass it on. The reason micro events are so important is if you've ever put on a very large event, think how many people are coming and you don't even remember who showed up and who didn't. For a micro event, this is a way to have a very intentional conversation with those specific clients, especially if Meg said, oh, I know that these people are about to buy or sell. I'm going to invite them to every event. How could you still have those intentional conversations? Real estate will come up, but you're together. When the large client events happen, the whole goal around the large client events, it gives you a reason to call your database to invite them. For those that attend, great. And then afterwards, you follow up and thank those people that uh, attended, but also call those people and say, hey, I missed you. That's what a large event looks like. But a micro event, you can get really specific, really intentional on in those conversations. And how do you make them, again, clients for life within the micro events? Um, and so that's where, even if you ever thought that an event is overwhelming to put on, start with four people. All go out to go get a whiskey or a cigar or you go golfing or maybe there was one lady that had tennis. And so she started carrying branded tennis bags with her to start that relationship. So whatever you enjoy doing, I'm sure all of you have hobbies outside of just real estate. What is that one thing that you could talk to people for hours about that doesn't make it feel like working? And start with that. And then as you start getting the hang of it, how can you make it into a micro event? How can you make it into a larger event? But it doesn't cost a lot of money. And I love that Megan was able, or Meg was able to show that by partnering with a lender, by partnering with your title company, by partnering with whatever vendor partner that is really important to you. That is a great way to start. So does anyone have any questions for Meg? I do. Meg, I assume the, the event is pointless if you don't do the follow-up, correct? Is that where correct. they make examples of it? Yes. Yeah. So the, the micro events have about three to four touches before. And then yes, the either thanks so much for coming or sorry, we missed you afterward. And, and these are, are connecting more with like your VIP a list, you know, top 100 or 200 people, as Rachel said, doing a give online giveaway. Like that's why, that's why there's a combination of kind of all six events. Um, 
that you can grow to doing those larger ones, but these are a great way to get started. Yeah. And Nicole in the chat said the QR code, code did work for her. So oh. I think it's working okay. Well, thank you, Meg, so much for your time. If you ever have a referral for One Chicago, you now know Meg and you yes. know what her ideal client is. So now you can match it up. So thank you so much for your time and we really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Have a great rest of the day. I'm here to help. Slide of every meeting. What are your action items? What did you get from this that you can go out and do immediately? Go find some events. Yeah. <laughs> go meet some people, right? Again, what are your lead sources? Events. You know, how can you just go and network? There's a mom walk group. I mean, that's like something that's so popular. Or a movie night or the Barbie movie. How do you tap into the Barbie movie? I mean, because that's everywhere yeah, I'm seeing. I thought that was great to do a movie idea. I saw a meme that said the Barbie marketing team needs a raise after everything that's been happening, <laughs> right? Um, so how can you go out and meet more people? That's awesome. Who else? Who else has an aha? Try it. So we started doing events the past few months, thanks to Peyton. Um, and I think the biggest thing I took away was asking everybody who's coming to your events to bring a friend. And so our deal was we did a night at the ballpark and me being somewhat small brain at times is like cost save, like less people come, we don't have to buy as many tickets, all that stuff, <laughs> which is horrible, right? Um, but go out and ask them to bring friends in a way to do that. What I took away from her at the beginning was facilitate events, don't pay. Um, so find the things that you like doing and be the facilitator of the group and not necessarily having to pay for them, but um, asking the, the people that you know to bring friends so you can yeah. connect with your people and also meet people at the same time, all through the same event. And how many referrals have you already received from doing the one event that you've decided to do? Five. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the it cost pays itself. So again, find something that you enjoy doing. It doesn't have to be this big, glamorous $1,000 event could be whatever you want. Or maybe you're trying out a new restaurant. Uh, maybe you're going to the 14 mill market in Nixa, because if you haven't been, that place is really cool. Uh, but that would be a great place because then there's like a food court and then everyone can go by their own, but then you could hang out and eat food uh -huh. together. What are those different ways? And just think outside the box. It doesn't have to be you always doing them. It doesn't have to be you always paying for them. And as you can tell, I really like events. So this is why I'm like kind of on the soapbox <laughs> here. Um, but these, these are things that you should do and you can connect with your database at a more intentional level. I've got an action item I'm going to do. Remember the Christmas backdrop we had last year? And so we're going to do client events with photo. We're going to try and get that out earlier so you can have maybe. Oh, we already talked about that. Yeah. How do, as a market center, we open up client events for agents right. to bring their clients in? Because you can yeah. use this room for free. We'll probably have it over there again. That way you can invite them in and then you can have them maybe even yeah. before Christmas. Yeah. So that, that's funny. You were in our mind. Yeah. Nicole and Haley and I's conversation. I put that on my calendar yeah. so we're going to get the backdrop. <laughs> It'll be a different backdrop from last year. So it's a little bit different look each year. Yeah. But awesome. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Remember, next week we have another guest speaker. So let's show up for him as well. And again, Meg, thank you so, so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everyone.